G'day everyone and welcome back to True Footy for round 19's edition of Just The Tips. The season is hotting up, as I've been saying for a little while now, but it does feel like each and every round is getting increasingly exciting. The finals race is as open as I can possibly remember. Pretty much every team up until the bottom four is still a sneaky chance for finals and we've got more games in this particular round, particularly against teams around the same part of the ladder that will go a long way to shaping this year's finals race. It was a tricky round of tipping last week. I got six out of nine, the three that I got wrong were the Western Bulldogs. I tipped them to beat Sydney in Sydney. I thought I'd tip Sydney. I made a mistake there. I did tip the Crows to beat the Giants in Adelaide. That one was a bit of an upset. And I did tip the Power to beat the Blues and I got that one horribly wrong. So the rest of them I got right. That puts me at 514th in the overall rankings of the True Footy League. You can find the link to join the league uh, in the description of this video. The round 18 winner we will shout out as Jero1036 uh, who got 8 out of 9 tips. So nobody got a perfect nine. I'm guessing the ad Adelaide GWS game might have been the one that stumped for people. The tipping leader is still Christian 2125642 with 115 and a margin of 475. Christian has been leading the competition for a while now, so shout out to you, Christian. You're doing a great job. The fantasy leader is also someone who has been leading for a while in Bailey's Brawlers with an average of 2216, so an absolute dominant performance there. The game day squad winner, of course, we do have our game day squad competition in the description of this video, guys. It's the top link you should go check it out it is my favorite fantasy style game to play i do a weekly video on it updating on my team um, and you'll be helping the channel out if you click the link in the description make a team for free get in all the fun and it's a dynasty league which means that you can recruit now for the rest of the year you may not win the overall ladder but there are weekly prizes that can be won and also you carry your team into next year so the earlier you start the better you will be for next season so make sure you check it out but the winner of this particular week was peanut butters with an impressive score of 20 354. I think I got around the 2000 mark. I'm sitting about 12th in that competition. Uh, we've got 132 people in the league now, so make sure you join in the action. It'll be great to get that number closer to 150. So we're going to crack back in with squiggle.com, my favorite website for footy tipping. Um, and this round is tough. There's a few really good games here, and the first of which is no exception Essendon versus the Bulldogs at Marvel Stadium. This one is tricky to pick. Two evenly rated sides. I'd previously held the Bulldogs in slightly higher esteem, but I still really respect Essendon. The Dons obviously got, you know, a bit of a shock going to Geelong at GMHBA. A bit of a reality check. You know, the bar of the competition is up here with Geelong, particularly at MG GMHBA. Um, even though they've been out of form, they're still genuinely a premiership contender. Essendon go there. They get blown out of the water in the first quarter. Um, and again, it's really hard to assess them because some good teams have gone there and gotten blown out of the water in previous years. The Bulldogs went to Sydney, and I thought this was a really winnable game for them. Evidently, I tipped them, and uh, despite dominating a lot of the clearance stuff, Sydney were too good at home, and uh, this really opens up this part of the ladder because I kind of previously thought the Bulldogs would establish themselves as one of those top five or six teams, and they still may, may be in the top six, but separating these two teams is hard, and this will be a tough game to pick. Uh, it's at Marvel Stadium. I still think the Bulldogs are a better side, and are probably a little bit more... I would say reliable, but there's been times where the Bulldogs have really let me down with my tipping this year. This could be an elimination final preview. These two sides could easily finish 6th and 7th, or uh, maybe not 5th and 8th, but 6th or 7th, it's, it's quite possible. Uh, I'm going to tip the Bulldogs here as the more mature side. Again, it's, it's a hard one to pick, but I just if you ask me to rank who is slightly better, I still think it would be the Bulldogs, but anything could happen here. The Bulldogs have let me down a bit this year, but I'll tip them in a good game by 12 points. Then you've got Richmond and Hawthorne at the MCG. Two sides that, uh, well, they're 11th and 16th on the ladder, as you can see. I don't think it's an enormous gap between these two sides, despite the two and a half wins between them. Hawthorne have obviously, um, after that, well, pretty much since that game against West Coast, let's be real. They have demonstrated that they're clearly a lot better than the bottom two, and I think they find themselves at the bottom of that glut of teams, but they still have this knack of, of just not showing up occasionally. Two strong MCG sides. Richmond undoubtedly have been on a resurgence under McWalter. They had one blip in that big loss to the Brisbane Lions at the Gabba, but you know, obviously considering how good Brisbane are, you don't mark Richmond too heavily against that. They're five and one from their last six. Dusty Martin's also in some of the better uh, ball winning form in terms of how much he's winning the footy and impacting the game. He was very good against West Coast. Um, I think I'm a little bit more trustworthy of Richmond going into this game. Anything could happen because Hawthorne obviously are very capable. 
but I'm going to tip Richmond here by 20 points. But this, if they lost this game, Richmond would be officially out of the finals race, I'd imagine. Carlton versus West Coast at Marvel Stadium. What a doozy. Uh, Carlton on a real hot streak. They've uh, they've won four in a row by uh, over 50 points. And if they win this game by 50 points, they'll be the third team to do it in history. Um, and, you know, obviously the synergy at Carlton, despite, you know, losing Mackay, the forward entries are much better. Their midfield's clicking. They look like they were running on top of the ground against Port Adelaide. So they're a very dangerous proposition here. And finals are very realistically in their grasp, which is crazy to think that, you know, considering where they were four weeks ago, that they may end up finishing higher than they did last year. That's kind of wild to me. But West Coast at the moment, seen some improved form. This is a horrible time to play Carlton, even though we've demonstrated an ability to, to get more competitive. I don't really think there's a realistic chance we get within seven goals of this Carlton side right now. I think Carlton's eyes will light up. They'll go for some percentage. Their percentage is already pretty healthy, but oh, I can't see it being less than 50 points. I'm gonna say 70 points, and that's probably conservative. I think this will be a belting. Brisbane versus Geelong at the Gabba, this is a doozy. So Brisbane obviously have been one of the better teams in the competition all year, and they've been in some great form. And last week got their hearts broken by Melbourne. Uh, on Friday night it was at the dying stages, and they probably should have won that game. And Even though they did, I think there's enough positive signs from Brisbane there to, to really make me think, shit, they're still a contender. They just, they lost that at the dying stages. You know, maybe they went defensive too early. I'm not, not really too sure. It felt like they went into their shells and they probably should have won that game. Geelong are now in really good form and it's typical. It's annoyingly typical of this Geelong side. You'll want to write them off and then they come back well. Look at their percentage at 123%. This is a bad time to play Geelong. The first couple of months of the season, it was a good time to play Geelong. And, uh, and then they had another lapse in between. I think they had another three game losing streak in the middle of the year. And now they're looking very, very dangerous. Gabba is a tough ask for anyone, but I feel like Geelong is one of those anytime, any place kind of teams, particularly when they're in this form. I think obviously Brisbane have been a better side this year, but oh, this is tough. I think I decided in my head that I was going to tip Geelong this week, but now I think about it. Brisbane at the Gabba, oh, they're too hard to beat. They're too hard to beat. This will be a good game though. I don't, I don't see Brisbane rolling over and therefore I think they'll win by 12 points, but a big Geelong win is not completely out of the question. It's Geelong. Port Adelaide versus Collingwood at Adelaide Oval. Now, again, a few weeks ago, I probably would have tipped the home side in Port Adelaide, uh, but they were pretty flat against Carlton. Carlton are a good side at the moment. Port Adelaide made a number of changes. Can they get themselves mentally up for this game? They'd won 13 on the trot. There was a handful of close games in there. And uh, statistically speaking, they were due for a down game. Will that just be a one and done down game? I don't think that really is too common, but I suppose it's possible. They would have taken a knock to the confidence, that's for sure, that's for sure. Collingwood, on the other hand, have not really put a foot wrong for a while now. And uh, against Fremantle, blew them away in that 10 goal second term. And um, you know, since I made a comment a few weeks ago, maybe they, like Bort, didn't have the same killer instinct to really put teams away. They've started to do that in the last few weeks and their percentage is nearly 140%. I think Collingwood is the best side in the comp, absolutely. Um, I'm gonna tip them here. I, I have a feeling that Co uh, Port, Port with their home crowd is always dangerous. They, they generally do well, perform well in front of their big home crowd. Um, this will be tricky. Collingwood probably have a pretty good presence in the crowd there as well. Either way, I'm gonna tip Collingwood here to be honest. Sorry, I've just lost a little bit of confidence in Port. Um, not in terms of their entire season, but just can they back it up next week and beat Collingwood? They probably can, but let's say Collingwood by 21 points. In fact, 27 points. Fremantle versus Sydney at Optus Stadium. Uh, Fremantle, obviously very lackluster at the moment. We're talking about two bottom five sides here. Who would have thought that last year? Uh, Fremantle got belted by Collingwood, uh, got belted by Carlton the week before that. Obviously, Carlton uh, are probably better than we expected or gave them credit for. Um, obviously, a big win in Perth against Fremantle at the time I thought was a bit unexpected. And now that they've just beaten Port by 50 points, you think, oh, okay, maybe Fremantle aren't as terrible as we thought. Sydney kind of kept their season alive by the skin of their teeth um, by beating the Bulldogs, but at 14th there, there's really no margin for error. So this is like a mini final for the Swans, um, whose percentage is 21% better than Fremantle. Wow. Oh yeah, that's right. We lost to them by 171 points. Anyway, I think Fremantle have good form against Sydney. Um, I feel like they've beaten them there in Perth, both in Perth and in Sydney in recent times. And I don't really trust Sydney as much as I used to. I think that's fair enough to considering the ladder position. I'm actually gonna tip Fremantle here. I think they're gonna get the home crowd's gonna get get them by. I think Sydney have more to play for and may come into this with this mentality. Sean Darcy probably isn't gonna play, is he? 
that will influence my tip. So Rong will be back into the side. I'm going to tip Fremantle here. I'm going to, I think they have a knack of beating Sydney and they'll end season, a Sydney season uh, with a 15 point win. GWS versus Gold Coast at Manuka. Uh, interesting. So the Giants have kept their season alive with five consecutive wins. They've had a surprise win over the Crows in Adelaide, something that's been very tough to do this year. They're still in the finals race. Whitfield, Kelly, Green, Sam Taylor, these guys are in good form. Adam Kingsley's got them playing a new brand of footy. There's a lot to like there. On the other side of the coin, Gold Coast have also shown, um, it, uh, as much as there's been bad performances, there's been some really good performances as well. And a four to five goal win over the Saints keeps them alive this season. There's also the factor in here, the Giants aren't strong at Manuka. So I'm hoping for a good game here, but. At the same time, I feel like the Giants generally kill Gold Coast. Let's have a look. Okay, so looking at their last four games, GWS have won three of them, uh, and it was by 26 points last year that we they played at Sydney. They never played each other at Manuka. That'll be interesting. So it's not quite as one-sided as I thought. The GWS were good this year. Maybe the head-to-head's not as helpful as I thought. Gold Coast are good enough to beat them, but GWS in their current form, I am not willing to tip against them. I'm gonna tip them by a healthy 32 points. I, I think it's more likely that Gold Coast don't show up to this game, despite GWS's form at Monica. So I'll say GWS by 34 points. Then you've got Melbourne and the Crows at the MCG. This one has some potential. This one has some potential. Uh, Melbourne obviously, you know, kept their premiership chances, if you like, alive with uh, with that win over Brisbane. Maybe that's a little too dramatic, but again, you know, they're, they're not guaranteed for top four if they lose that game. And in fact, they're still not guaranteed at all. So regardless, it was a good win um, in terms of beating one of the best sides in the comp right now in Brisbane, who obviously don't fear Melbourne, let's be honest, like considering what happened in the finals last year. They've had some patchy form lately, obviously, and their inability to hit the scoreboard consistently has been a problem. They scored 105 against Brisbane. So are they back? I'm not too sure. And they're coming up against the Crows side who was so promising through that middle patch of the year and have dipped a little bit as young sides expectedly do. Adelaide's form at the MCG has been, uh, you know, well, I think, I think they've played one game there this year and it was, what, a two-point loss to Collingwood? So the ground itself is not what's going to make me rule out Adelaide for this game. I think it's just the form line, but I think, I think there's some potential here. I'm tipping a close game. I will tip Melbourne here, but it might only be 20 points. Then you've got the Saints and North. North Melbourne in a game that's likely to sell out Marvel Stadium. Uh, the Saints obviously have been on a downward decline um, as evidenced by their big loss to Gold Coast. It was only 26 points, but it was a low scoring game and Gold Coast were clearly the better side. And uh, Ross Lyons comments after that game about how poor they were and how much they don't deserve to be in the finals right now shows the frustration and it shows where they're really at. They could still make the finals because they've got an easy run home. They got the Roos obviously and Hawthorne still to come, although you know Hawthorne have beaten them this year. So the Saints have been lackluster, but have they been as lackluster as North Melbourne? No, they haven't. North obviously played Hawthorne, got done by 48 points, and realistically should have lost by more, and they just look out of sorts. It's, just, it's their senior players as much as anyone showing real signs of lack of confidence, and uh, it doesn't look like it's a happy place to be at the moment. So in terms of winnable games left for the year, this is probably still counts as one for North in terms of relativity. St Kilda are not in great form at the moment, so if North play out of their skins, they could win this, but I still think Saints have been mediocre, but there's still a real gap there, and I'll tip the Saints by... 36 points. So there you have it guys. That is my predictions for round 19 as we look at the implications on the ladder. So that Geelong game is quite a big one. Brisbane versus Geelong. I mean, I know that's kind of an understatement, but Geelong dipped down to eighth if they lose to Brisbane, that they would consolidate their spot in the top five if they win that, which is interesting. Port Adelaide still in the top two despite two losses in a row, and uh, GWS climb into seventh spot with a win over the Gold Coast Suns, which I think is a safe bet. I think the Giants should be in the finals uh, or in the top eight at the end of this round. But this could be the round that sort of separates the men from the boys in terms of that top eight race. You know, if you look at the ladder there, Gold Coast Fremantle on Sydney will then find it pretty hard to make the finals. Well, I suppose they're only a game and a half outside it, but it's gonna be an interesting round with some serious finals contenders playing each other. And that sets up a beautiful clash between West Coast and North Melbourne, the Wooden Spoon Cup, even though if West Coast win that, they'll probably still win the Wooden Spoon. Carlton still sitting outside in ninth with a huge clash against Collingwood, as you can see on my screen there. Um, that will kick off round 20. So the season is getting exciting, guys. It's, it's been exciting for a little while, but it's starting to really hit that point of the season where there's so many narratives going on, playing for careers, playing for finals chances. It's all great stuff. So in the comments, let me know uh, what you agree with, what you disagree with, uh, what is your upset tip of the round. 
For me, it's probably Adelaide versus Melbourne. I, I still think I have some faith in Adelaide to uh, pull off a shock win there, even though Rochelle is going to be out. And they've, they've played like pretty averagely the last few weeks. But regardless, looking forward to your input, guys. Um, as always, make sure you're joined into the Game Day Squad competition and the footy tipping competition. It's all in the description of this video, guys. So hope to see you there. Otherwise, hope you're doing well. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.